Good evening, everybody. Very warm welcome to Northeast Darts TV. Tonight we've got Battle of Tain and Weir. It's Saturday night at the Darts. And we've got the showpiece match from Tain and Weir's Inter Counties League that we run. And it's Super Mac Kevin McDine taking on John Kippen. Best of nine, the format. And it was Kevin McDine who won the bullseye prior to going live. Could that be crucial? As the match develops. Kevin of Wall's End, Super Mac, and John Kippen of Gateshead. About to get underway, folks. Right, son. You ready? Yeah, we are. All the best. All the best, bud. It's McDine's darts, and it's game on. One, two, three. McDine using his own darts. Data Six, dart, 24 gram Kevin McDine's. The big name of the two, but certainly seen John Kippen play in the past. He's a danger in this match. Very accomplished player. 58. Oh, 41. McDain at the board, 320. Sixty. So two sixty after nine darts. A steady eighteen dart a hold a throw you'd be looking at. One hundred. Look better than a ton from here. But Kippen finding his range on the red bit. One four. Solid 140 there for McDine. Power scorer at his best. And so far in 2021, he has been 45. like Kevin McDine-esque. Consistently inconsistent, but when he's good, he's very good. One hundred Keeps tabs there with Kev. 155, but it's McDine now. He's left 20, 30. so it's Kippen who doesn't really put pressure on that. So McDine with time on his side, double 10 to take the opening leg. Oh, that's good. 60. 16. It didn't bust there, so McDine confident at double two. But how much pressure will he be under? Because 30. Kippen back on 2 2 5. And he's still not on a finish, so this should be super max leg to wrap up. <laughs> no score. And 21 darts thrown. He won't be bothered about that. It's just about getting off the mark. And Kippen will just be thinking 60. about the next leg already, I'm sure. 60. So double two. House of the Mad. Yay, in two. Yeah. Takes the opening leg on the on the madhouse, and Kippen will look for a strong holder throw here to remain in this match. It's a best of nine, a sprint format, you could say, and you can't afford to give someone with the prowess of Kevin McDine an early advantage. He's got to pressure him and some. One, two, three. Solid open and throw from both players. 59. McDine after that. Terrific opener. One, two, three. Hasn't followed it up here. 58.
John Attain and we are county A player. Very accomplished player, as we say. Certainly, at his best, he'll give McDane a good game here. 100. Early averages below their best. They've certainly got gears to go through. As we know, averages don't win matches. It's all about getting the W. And it's Team Mock against Team Kippen. So representing his team here. And Kevin McDyne representing Team Mock. Dan Mock. One the opening match of the night. 44. In the Tyne and Weir division. 5-3 victory with a 79 average 74. against Paul McGowan. Twenty-six. And McDyne not at the races here, so Kippen with time on his side to market. level things up, and he's done just that. Level game, one's a piece. And we've got a game on our hands, folks. The whole purpose of the Battle of Tyne and Weir is to raise money for Tyne and Weir County Darts. They all stick a fiver in at the start of the night. And 59. prizes go for the highest average of the night. Winning average, that is. The man of the match of £25. And £20 to the highest checkout of the evening. 56. So keep an eye on that. We'll be looking for a few th three-figure checkouts as well as some Bobby Dazzler 44. averages. Averages we've seen from McDyne on TV. And certainly Kippen, if he brings his A game to the table, can produce the goods as well. 90 plus average for the county. Nine. Winner of the Gateshead Globe, Globe Tournament, in which he beat Modern Amateur Darts' Northeast Regional 58. Champion. Davy Prince in that semi final. So he can mix it with the best in the Northeast. And he's doing so right now against McDyne. One forty. Lovely one forty there from Kev. Four hundred. So one three one. He's got time on his sides, but with that incentive of the highest checkout of the evening, can he take it out? He'll start off. He went for treble 17 for two double tops, as McDyne does. One, two. He has some very quirky finishes. He'll keep us on my toes tonight, no doubt. Forty-five. This is match nine of 13, everybody. The showpiece match of the evening. Live on North East Arts TV. McDyne wants double two once again. Inside. <laughs> Secures the leg once again. One oh, three now. He didn't, so McDyne will be back yeah, for double four and he makes no mistake yeah, no. this time. The flight was blocking the, that madhouse shot, but he made no mistake second time round. And it's a 2-1 advantage. All three legs at present going with throw. McDyne and Kippen both sat on a 67 average. And the scoreline would suggest it's equally as tight. As mentioned, uh, Kev McDyne made it through pre-Q school with... Uh, Comfortable run to the last 16, which assured him of getting to Q School finals night. I'm sure he won't want us to remind him of how the last match of his Q School experience went for 2021 because he was 5 1 up against Peter Hudson, The Rock, and uh, unfortunately, Hudson reeled off five legs to qualify ahead of him, one point adrift on four points over the overall qualifying, but McDyne one, two, has the quality. One. He'll be back in no time, I'm sure of that. A very solid leg here from Kippen. 
John doesn't like to play a lot of competition darts. He likes to wind down with a bit of horse racing and football bets. And the way that the amateur game's going with modern, modern amateur darts, it's going to cater for everybody in terms of which level they'd like to reach or aspirations in the game. And the pub to pro, pub to pro format can apply. But also, for the likes of Kevin McDyne, it's a handy parachute, as mentioned, to help the players regain their status in the promised land back with a PDC to a card. Kipping for 110. Stays up top for it. Fifty six if he returns. McDain on ninety one here. Treble fourteen. I oh, went the double route. I said Kevin would keep us on my toes with his scoring. It's a nice way to go if you're able to execute it. But a wasted dart from that point of view. And he's give Kippen a chance at two darts at double top to level things up. And unfortunately, he's unable to secure that. So McDyne for a 3 1 advantage, 32 2 16s. Just inside. <laughs> a lovely marker, unable to take advantage of that slide in off the barrel and Kippen for 2 2. In three, man. A very nerveless double five, and we've got a Desmond on our hands. It's 2-2 two, two in this one. 2-2 two, two in the scoreline. Minimal margins in the averages at 67 and 66. This is going to go to the wire, folks. 60. One forty. John Kippen also reached the final of the Horton Comrades competition prior to lockdown where he got beat off Ryan Joyce in the final. One, three, four. That was after he beat Princey in the semi-final. So as mentioned, he's certainly not afraid to mix it with the big boys. 60. Which up in Tyne and Weir, they have such a competitive circuit that they've got on their hands and they're only going to bring each other's games on fantastically well. 83. John was down prior to the lockdown at 32nd in the averages with Tyne and Weir when you've got the likes of Ryan Joyce, uh, unbelievable Jeff Murray. 55. And young Jack Mill in the top 10. Real quality players, real quality prospects in the likes of Jack Mill. Oh, 85. Eighty-six. Great second dart, but the third one drifted into the treble three. So McDyne still with the advantage here. First pop at a double for a one three nine checkout. Unable to secure that on the first dart. So Kippen will be back for a one sixty opportunity to take the lead for the first time. Sixty. Sixty-two going for Kevin McDyne. Will he go the 14s or the 10s route here? Double 16 for the advantage once again. 46. Yes, this certainly isn't uh, Caviar McDyne, but 16. doing enough to get his team the point at the minute. Yeah, and he takes yeah, it out for a 19 dart leg on double eight. He'd be pleased with that to get rid of that in first dart. And he's two legs away from the match. Kippen will look to keep tabs and hold his throw once again. Always chasing, but always responding. And 
This is the Star Forks of Northeast Darts TV Thanks. and MadDarts.TV. We've got some very exciting Challenger Series events coming up with the launch, 45. the dawn of Modern Amateur Darts in December. And we're going to be finding out around the regions who is going to be the challengers for the Super Regional Champions over the next couple of weeks. The first challenge for these players. And obviously that can lead to bigger and better things with our national 93. championship opportunities. With three defences, we'll give the opportunity to take on an English champion. 43. And then, of course, up the pyramid, we've got the European champion and the world championship. The belts will be on the line. Fifty-six. Finds the lipstick, does Kippen. One hundred. And McDyne will look to kick on here and break. Forty-three. Only forty-three, so gives Kippen a chance, an opportunity. Can he take advantage of it? Needs a treble. One hundred. Finds the treble. Averages creeping up into the 70s for McDyne as we reach the business end of the match. McDyne, who also featured at the recent UK Open 60. in Milton Keynes at the Marshalls Arena, where he won his first match against Keelan Keir before going out second round to Rowby John Rodriguez 6-3, a player that has come back into a bit of form, unfortunately, for Kevin. A tournament which has not been one of his greater tournaments on TV anyway. Of course. Yeah, we'll just watch this double land. Yeah, and it's McDyne who goes one away from the match here. He's on the hill. Yes, McDyne, of course, made his debut in 2007 where I was his lucky driver as we went to, Mil as we went to Wolverhampton, the Aldersley Arena. On 40. And he breezed through the field there, along with a certain Chris Mason that day. Very impressive also. Oh, 43. Reached the semi-final on TV debut with some impressive displays. The young kid on the block at the time certainly got the talent to get back there if he gets his head in the right place, which I'm sure he's on doing that now. Back-to-back no, -back 140s, McDyne, as he looks to... Secure with the match at this visit, and he's back in the red bit again. He's on an 11 dart finish to win the match, and Kippen way back. 60. <laughs> he goes for it. Double 13 for a 12 dart leg. Hit the treble 12, and 13 when he returns. A very professional Holy performance one. here from Kevin. Really pounced on his opponent when he sensed a bit of weakness. And McDyne uh, loves nine. double four as well, and he struggled on that tonight, chasing his doubles on the, the lower echelon of the doubles, twos, fours, and ones. 96. So McDyne, double two for the match and a 5-2 victory. Yay, two. Game shot on the match. Yeah, well, Kevin McDyne wins it 5 2. A 73.89 average. And it's Team Mock who oh, adds oh. a point to the tally <laughs> in the Tyne and Weir. Generally battle. in late. <laughs> I can wish it ill well, but I'm not. And as we look at that, it's the 140s that uh, seem to be the difference in the match. Five one forties to one. It really was power scoring there from Kevin as the latter stages developed. But uh, John Kippen, like I say, a very quality, t a talented player. McDyne certainly uh, not played his A game, but it was very much enough to take the match there. Congratulations to Kevin, and we we'll look forward to seeing you, no doubt, in uh, the Northeast Challenger Series event uh, and, of course, the Time and Wheel event. John, excellent stuff also. Thank you very much for your time, everybody. We look forward to seeing you all soon. Thank you very much. I hope you've enjoyed it as much as me. Good night and God bless.